this ever happened to you? You slyly try to sneak out of spawn so you can support your team. Seeing no scout, sniper, or spy, you start strutting your stuff before subconsciously coming to a startling situation. You never looked skyward. Soon, you're skybombed, with your spleen being splattered and scattered all over while seeing the soldier responsible for your slaughter. And you type into the chat, try hard. Both a plus sign for the T and a 2 for the R's. But why? Scout is hated due to his mobility. Sniper is hated due to his range. Demo is hated due to his spam. And Soldier is hated because, well, there's no real reason to hate him. Which makes people hate him. It makes no sense, which is exactly why it makes sense. I think. Soldier is clearly designed to be the most balanced and well-rounded class within TF2, with solid damage output, the second highest health pool in the game, and the potential for the highest mobility in the game as well. His meager downside of being one of the slowest classes in the game is easily countered by the sheer power Rocket Jumping has, allowing Soldier to become the star of the next Fast and Furious movie. All these benefits of a downside that's easy to shrug off, like a court summons I receive, make Soldier all pros and no cons, a common argument people tend to make when discussing the class. Soldier's damage output is unchallenged within TF2, with his high output, decent range, knockback, and of course, splash damage. A trait that makes aiming more of a suggestion than a requirement, allowing Soldier to get kills out of the sight line and disrupt your team allowing for players with few hours and little skill into the game to still be a threat. This damage and splash radius becomes even more annoying when the soldier gets one of those rare high moments, as the game puts it. Or a crocket. Think about that term for a second, there's no such thing as a krill, I'm not referring to the crustacean. Tying into soldier's second most noticeable trait, his mobility. A trait so intertwined with soldier's identity that several items exist solely to further boost his potential. Rocket jumping allows Soldier to quickly go from there to here to here to there, from the sky to watch you die. If he wants to fight, he might, or he'll leave saying, no, that's quite alright. People are used to looking straight ahead and doing the occasional 180, but tend to neglect the Y-axis, allowing for Soldier to gain a monopoly in the air, killing anyone before he touches the ground, and if he sees a fight he can't win or safely engage in, then he's out of there, with little chance for you to catch up unless you're playing Sniper. These qualities allow Soldier to fill any role his team needs. Needs someone to flank? He can flank. Needs someone to defend? He can defend. Needs someone to babysit the kids? He can babysit the kids. Soldier can be placed within a job or role and do the job well. He's as Elastigirl puts it, flexible. This role flexibility can turn from general to specific with the many varied unlockable weapons Soldier has. The stock rocket launcher functions as the baseline. It doesn't specialize into anything particular. You need to kill someone? It can do that with ease, with a flux of four hard-hitting rockets. Some annoying Texan erecting a migraine for your team? It can solve that issue with its ability to hit both the sentry and the engineer without putting yourself in danger around corners. In contrast, the direct hit trades that splash damage, meaning you'll have to be focusing on... head-on blows instead. In exchange, however, you gain the ability to make any lightweight class disappear like a deadbeat dad, thanks to his 25% more damage. The direct hit deals even more damage while doing sick tricks, being able to mini-crit airborne targets, made slightly easier thanks to his faster projectile speed as well. The rocket jumper, like an angsty teen, says, Screw you, mom and dad, I don't want to deal damage, and focuses entirely on boosting soldiers' mobility. Ideal for being a sneaky bastard with a shotgun or the market gardener. An extremely good soldier is a much scarier spy, because instead of worrying about a 180 degree radius behind you, you're instead worrying about a full 360 radius. The black box, on the other hand, is going through its edgy phase with this whole your pain brings me join dealio going on, trading a rocket in exchange for health on hit based on damage, allowing the class with the second highest health pool in the game to stay in fights even longer, combined with the contra of his passive health regen and ability to increase the speed of the user and surrounding teammates and give even more health back on hit, and you'll find yourself basically fighting the Hydra from Greek mythology. With every 10 damage you deal, he heals back 20. The cow mangler's claim to fame is that everyone thinks it's really good and competitive without realizing it's banned and competitive. Reason for this is that it doesn't use ammo, having an infinite reserve. 
It also has this secondary charge thing that you'll rarely ever see being used, due to it halting the soldier to a near stop, giving it an extremely loud whirring sound, and being seen by everyone from here to Uzbekistan. If by some chance you do manage to get hit by the world's most obvious do not touch sign, you'll be hit by a rocket dealing mini crit damage and set on fire with the afterburn also dealing mini crit damage. Recall that thing I said about the Y axis and people not looking up? Well, the airstrike focuses on exploiting people's infused neck bones by gaining a surplus of bonuses while rocket jumping, such as increased firing speed and dealing less self damage. Each kill with the airstrike adds another rocket to place in the clip to a maximum of 8. Sure, it's got a damage penalty and a splash radius reduction, but when you're reenacting the Vietnam War against a single scoped in sniper, the negatives kind of pale in comparison. I love the smell of a kicked ass in the morning. The Beggar's Bazooka. What can I say about the Beggar's Bazooka? It's different. Soldier already excels in dealing with groups of enemies, but the Beggar's Bazooka just puts that into overdrive by launching three rockets instead of one all over the place. And I'm no mathematician, but my abacus here says three rockets hurt more than one. The final rocket launcher is a bit special, to put it nicely, and was probably dropped on its head as a baby, to put it not so nicely. The Liberty Launcher attempts to be like the soldier's philosophy of being a flexible, all-around rocket launcher, taking stats from each and every rocket launcher, resulting in this Frankenstein's abomination of a rocket launcher that has a lot going for it, aside from decent damage. Despite this, it serves more of a setup weapon, relying on soldier secondaries to be truly effective. Such as the shotgun, panic attack, or even more impressive if used properly, the reserve shooter. All three perfect for when you can't afford to shoot a rocket point blank into your face, need to reload, or just need to say fuck off to a pyro. Of course, as a wise man once said, boots over shoots. The gunboats are the typical meta choice for soldiers, allowing them to rocket jump even more. In conjunction, we have the Man Treads that also help with rocket jumping with his air control and Goomba Stomp abilities, really solidifying that whole Y-axis attacker angle going on. Soldier also doesn't just work as a decent attacker or defender, but also as a support unit through the use of the banners. The buff banner provides many crits to teammates, resulting in a charge against your defensive hold and typically five dead teammates, unless you plan on using the extremely defensive battalion's backup, which not only provides Soldier with a passive 20 HP, further increasing his health, but also full immunity to crits, a 50% resistance to sentries, and a 35% resistance to everything else. And then there's the magic conch shell. We also have the base jumper and the righteous bison. Uh, anyways, Soldier has access to a select few melee weapons that allow him to become even more mobile, such as the disciplinary action, which not only helps him but his teammates, or the escape plan, also helping him nope out of there if he can't afford to rocket jump out. The pain train, while having limited usage, is actually a bit helpful. Imagine rushing the point expecting to defend against a scout just to come face to face against a soldier with a banner popped and ready just to destroy you. The Equalizer and Half Zatoichi further boost soldiers' melee capabilities, something that doesn't really matter unless playing something like Medieval Mode. Soldier is kinda like Scout. Both are extremely strong classes with few true downsides, but while Scout is more fixed to being pure offense, struggling on defense, Soldier has the luxury of being ideal for either or, and being able to specialize into any role he wants. This lack of a downside or counter typically makes him the bane of most players since there's no real weakness to him. The closest thing he has to a true counter is Pyro with Reflex, but even then that's still a matchup in the favor of the soldier. The distance between classes is even further displayed through the sheer offensive and utility power Rocket Jumping has. I've heard extremely stupid arguments that because Rocket Jumping was originally a bug, soldiers shouldn't be able to do it. Clearly, these people have never heard about Todd Howard before. While other classes can try to dip into specializing into other roles such as the Scaws Resistance being a more defense-based sticky bomb launcher, or the Sydney Sleeper a support sniper rifle, none can do it as well as Soldier's Unlocks, which can lead to certain loadouts being extremely difficult to fight against, such as the cliché Crutchbox combo, or the cliché Tryhard. 
leading to the creation of a class that could already deal with every situation, to now be able to thrive in any and all situations with few and negligible downsides to counter him. A jack of all trades and master of none, but despite not being a master, Soldier is still a threat in anything and everything, resulting in the hate he gets. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the year in the end of the video. whoop de doo Congrats. Welcome to the credits, you know, where we got all the patrons, you know, they're fun people. They don't hate Soldier. I don't think many people really hate Soldier. Kind of a hard thing to make a video topic on, and I can't believe I get to do one on Medic and Heavy now. Uh, which is just tremendous. Medic, medic will be a bit easy. Admittedly, there's there's the vaccinator, right? And crits. Heavy. We'll get there when we get there. You know, maybe I'll pull a lazy purple and I'll just never release why people hate medic, and as a result, never release why people hate heavy. You know, how it, how it feels to hate medic. It's never coming. It's never coming. You're screwed. It's never happening. Probably went all along. Yeah, I'm out of here. Happy New Year's.